Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. Let's talk about a huge fight coming up right now in the 130 pound weight class. That's the super featherweight weight class between Miguel Burchell, 37 and 1 with 33 KOs and unbeaten 28 and 0 with 22 KOs Oscar Valdez now who online would actually venture into these deep waters to make a pick hey I'll take my chances but first remember the opinion you should follow should be your own just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online now let me just say both of these guys are elites in their weight class. Elites. Valdez was the WBO featherweight title holder for years. He's moved up one division now. He's taking on the super featherweight champion, Miguel Burchelt. Understand, these two guys have very high KO percentages. They're both power punchers. I recognize that they're elite. But we need to make hard decisions, and that's going to lead to some hard statements here. We have to be critical if we're going to bet on this fight. Now, both of these fighters are older than you think. Valdez is actually 30. He's the older fighter. But understand, despite all the bells and whistles, despite all the great highlights, and you can find some of these highlights in my favorite folder, here on YouTube. Despite all the highlights, in terms of styles, these guys are both mid-range hookers. Both of them. Right? The more mysterious guy is Burchell. If I had one bet to make, if I had to pick a winner of this fight, it would be Burchell. And the reason is simply he's bigger. Right? He has to lose weight to make weight. He's bigger than Valdez. They both hit hard. Burchelt is high energy. Not only is he bigger, he's high energy. Right? To me, as they say in boxing, a good big man beats a good little man. And make no mistake, this fight is going to be a shootout. So if I had one bet to make, the person I expect to win this fight would be Miguel Burchelt. But that's not how I'm going to play it. Right? I believe the fight is mispriced at casinos. The casino's taking Valdez too lightly. He's a plus 333 underdog. I want a taste. So the bet I'm recommending is... Oscar Valdez, simply to win at plus 333, hedged with Burchell by stoppage at a minus 177, right? Well, let's dive into this video now that everyone knows how my cell phone sounds. Let's dive into this video. You know, Burchell has a jab. It's a little bit striking because he's a mid-range hooker. He has a very good jab. It keeps guys outside. But he doesn't use the jab to bludgeon you. He's not King Arthur, the guy who recently beat Anthony Yard. He's not Larry Holmes. He's not Carlos Monzon. Right? Those guys hit you with a jab to bludgeon you. The fight didn't start until you figured out how to deal with that jab. That jab was busting you up. It was hurting you. Now this guy has a stiff jab, but he doesn't use it that way because he's a mid-range hooker. He uses the jab just to push you out of the pocket, just to get you away from him. So then as you try to come back in the pocket, He's there with hooks. Understand, too, both of these guys 
wicked body punchers off the hooks, Burchell throws a spectacular uppercut. What he wants to do is to get both hands moving. He doesn't want to outbox you. He wants you coming forward so he can beat the daylights out of you. So the secret to beating a mid-range hooker, the secret to beating both of these guys is to either be able to operate outside behind the jab that scores, a busy jab, Scott Quigg had success late against Oscar Valdez with a jab. It's either to be able to win the fight from the outside, have a reach, know how to use it, not get hit in the body because you're too far away to get hit in the body. Dictate the spacing, be fluid backing up. That's one way to beat these guys, and I know they only have one loss between them, more than 60 fights between them. The other way to beat them, and it's more dangerous, is to get inside, to be right up on them. Think Andre Ward in the last round of the rematch against Kovalev. Right? If you're a guy who can get inside so close that your head is bouncing up against the other guy's head, you could give these guys problems. Now, Burchell is interesting in another way, too. You see him. He has great legs. He can move. You'll even see him backing up. You'll notice, though, that as he backs up, his offense leaves him. Very few fighters in the entire sport can fight backing up. If you could get him or Valdez fighting, backing up, you're going to take away a lot of their power. These guys want to plant. These guys want to go flat-footed. Burchell's jab and his quick feet disappear once he starts throwing bombs. Now there's a very intriguing uh, video that I have in my favorites folder here uh, of him fighting Jason Sosa, a superior boxer. And you're gonna notice Sosa at times, when he's at his best, is able to get inside. Now Sosa doesn't have, right, the long reach and size to stay outside and lean away. So Sosa gets deep in the pocket and you'll notice that he's able to land with regularity to Burchell's body, right? He's able to do that when he's deep in the pocket. I suspect that Oscar Valdez doesn't have Sosa's sense of savvy, isn't the stylist. Both of these guys are power punchers. Both of these guys want to go flat footed. Both of these guys want to fight at the same range. Folks, there's gonna be a shootout here. Somebody is gonna get hit and hurt. I believe somebody in this fight's gonna get stopped. Right? If you're gonna give me a plus 333 on Oscar Valdez, who is unbeaten, okay, I'll take the plus 333, but I'm gonna hedge the play with Burchell by KO at a minus 177. And then I'm going to juggle the numbers so I get a return if either happens because the plus 333 is greater than a minus 177, right? It's greater than a plus 177, so you have a little bit to play with there. But here's how I think the fight's going to go. I think Burchell's going to be moving around and stuff like that. His game is just to move around so you get suckered in. It's a trap. Right? Then, of course, both guys are going to start throwing hellacious hooks. Both guys are going to land. Neither guy is defensively blessed. Neither guy. In my opinion, both guys need an opening. They're not going to outbox you. 
where suddenly your game falls apart and that's when the guy comes in. Right? This is not Floyd Mayweather. These are sluggers. Right? They come in, they're just trying to throw bombs, throw hooks, jump side to side once the bullets start flying. Both guys are high volume. Both guys get hit flush at times. Both guys like to go to the body. I believe somebody gets stopped in this fight. I expect Burchell to win. I'm going to play it safe. I like the plus 333 odds on Valdez. So if there's an upset, great, I get plus 333. If Burchell wins by KO, okay, fine, I get a minus 177, but I've been able to increase that side of the play because I could fade the plus 133. This is a great fight. I'm expecting Burchell to win. But we're going to play the odds and take what the casino gives us. And we're going to take him by KO and Valdez to win just in case. The smaller guy, who's unbeaten, lands first in a fight where neither guy is defensively blessed. If you're a bigger risk taker than me, there's a bet out there that has to intrigue you. The under nine and a half rounds at a minus 162. Right, a minus 162. Understand, that takes you to the midway point of the 10th round. But you lose most of the championship rounds. Right? You want to, you know, you lose the second half of the 10th round, the 11th round, and the 12th round. Right? Let me also say, too, that if you're going to take the under 9.5, you want to hedge it with Valdez simply to win. Because understand what that gives you. If Valdez wins by stoppage, and I'm just telling you, I think someone's going to win this fight by stoppage. If Valdez wins by stoppage, you win both halves of the bet inside of nine and a half rounds. The midway point of the 10th round, nine full rounds and a half. If Valdez wins by stoppage, you're in the penthouse. You win both sides of the bet. If Burchell wins by stoppage, as long as it's before the midway point of the 10th round, you're covered. Because you win on anyone by stoppage before the midway point of the 10th round. But you don't get the opportunity to watch after the midway point of the 10th round. The bigger man, Burchell, go for the stoppage. Late. Right? If Burchell wins by KO after the midway point of the 10th round, you lose it all. If Burchell wins by decision, you lose it all. Well, I'm not going to deal with the over-under. I'm not going to swing for the fences. I'll settle for a double here or a single. Right? The bet I'm recommending, what I think will deliver, is Burchell by KO. You win there, if Burchell gets the KO in the 12th round, the 11th round, the 10th round, you don't have to worry about an over-under. Burchell by KO, hedged with the underdog Valdez, simply to win. Both guys are going to come in, and they're going to be throwing hooks. They're going to want the other fighter at mid-range. Their hot zones are identical. Valdez is going to try to get low. The problem with that is Burchell's power can go low. Right? Both guys like to hit you with liver punches. Right? Burchell also can get a guy going low, bending forward out of the pocket with devastating uppercuts. Frankly, I'd be surprised if this fight makes it to the eighth round. I'm expecting a stoppage. I'm going to take the underdog at a plus 333 simply to win, hedged with Burchell by stoppage. That's how I see the fight. Let me hear from you. 
I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.